Stick around for the half an hour, we're here with Hellbent. Um, and uh, after that, you really have to go to sleep, really, because otherwise, pff, we'll come around, and you don't want that. Um, okay, now, the first thing we have is we have a wonderful guest with us. Uh, his band was, or well, the band that he's connected to, has been uh, featured in the last two weeks of Hellbent, funnily enough. And um, it's Gog. Hello, Gog. Good evening. You are a Gog. I, thank you. <laughs> I thought you might be. Does that, because that sounds like a small fluffy toy to me, Gog. Um, it's been called that, yes. No, it's actually my initials. My full name is Jeffrey O'Driscoll Gray Lee, and so I've just taken the initials and G-O-G. So O'Driscoll, is that like, is that like a nickname? Because you were really good or something and they went, ah, oh, Driscoll. No, that was my mother's maiden name. And oh, really? Okay. So now it's my, my middle name. Cool, okay, so you're with uh, All Ordinaries, is that All right? Ordinaries. And tell me a little bit about the, the band. Uh, four local blokes from Melbourne. Um, just doing what comes naturally, playing music. Because you sound politics. like a local bloke from Melbourne, you do. do it's, it's the accent. <laughs> I, don't think, I, think, I think you're having me on. I don't think you're local at all, my dear friend. It's, it's Where North are you Northcote. From? Northcote. <laughs> Northcote, Carolina. Um, uh, no, the States, of course. Uh, Western US, Idaho, Utah, California. Okay, now I know that musicians hate it whenever they're asked this, but how would you classify your music? Um, probably as pop punk. We're, we're pop punk. Pop punk. It's it's heavier. It's faster. Um, but we're definitely gearing everything we're doing toward airplay, radio airplay. So it's definitely we're you know we're watching popular music, but it's it's pretty full on. It's pretty heavy. A lot okay. of energy. So the question I suppose would be, what's a young gay boy doing in a punk band? Uh, well, there's a lot of anger I think in punk. I think most people would agree with that. But I think anger is is a is a. If we're going to be serious here. I'll, Take off the specs. Go ahead, um, you have eyes. I, I think, yeah. I think, uh, no, the anger is, it's a pretty universal human condition. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't matter whether you're gay or you're straight. I mean, we're all human beings, and, and there, there are many human rights type issues that, that need to be discussed that um, I think it's appropriate that behind their, their energy is a certain amount of anger, behind right. their, their, con their words. Okay, so so this is this is a, a, your way of expressing your message. Uh, it's one way, yes. And a oh, one way, all right. What are some of the other ways? Um, I actually have a degree in motion picture production and direction, so I do make uh, the odd film video. Are they uh, angry? Um, no, actually, uh, the last the last educational film I made was a uh, a fifteen minute educational. Uh, short about marijuana and the, the teacher was this opera singer from New York City named Juan Jose Ibarra. Juan Jose Ibarra! And the star was this um, little 13 year old um, <laughs> feather named Ashley Woolboy. She, she was actually a Native American Indian and, and so you know they said Do you want to smoke the marijuana? Don't you smoke the marijuana, it's bad. No, it was um, actually one of the reasons why the, the educational film, we'll get back to the band in a second, but the educational stuff that I was making was doing very well was because um, the approach we used was, was uh, a no-holds-barred, information-realistic approach. There was no scare tactics, nothing like that. You know, it's like, this is what it does to your body. This is cool. what happens to you if you do too much of it. This is what happens, you know, okay. to, if no, you're We've a got limited time, so yeah, to run right, on. Right. Um, now, you guys are playing at, um, at Midsummer, which is actually uh, either coming up or on. No, it's on now. Um, so tell me a little bit about, you don't know quite where yet? Um, as, as we're taping yet, the, the actual placement of the band in Midsummer has not been determined. But you can find out by going to your website, checking out uh, web, Midsummer at www.midsummer.com.au or uh, the band's website, All Ordinaries, www. We'll, we'll get those yeah, addresses yeah, yeah, up yeah, later yeah. on. Because okay. I mean, um, otherwise, unless you're a really but, speed writer. But that's where all the schedules are, is on the websites. Okay, and now that's a mix of straight and gay, yeah? 
Uh, what, the band? Yep. Yes, absolutely. In fact, I am, I am the gay member of the band. <laughs> you are the gay member of the band. Do you get razzed about it? Um, no, actually, that was one of the reasons why I, went, I wanted to keep working with these guys. They're very accepting of me as a human being, and likewise, and so we just pour all of our energy into the music. Fantastic. All Ordinaries, catch them whenever you can, as soon as you can. Great. And now we're going to lovely young Kay Sarah. <laughs> about there's something evolving whatever may come the world keeps revolving they say the next big thing is here that the revolution's near but to me it seems quite clear that it's all just a little bit of history repeating Sarah, fantastic. And now we're going to do some comedy over that way. Fuck, there's enough of that on this uh, show already. So, I, in fact, I thought I'd do this joke about anal sex. It's one of my favorites, so it's like, bear with me as we go through this. Let us imagine a place far away. It's called Ireland. And there's a, a, a chap in a bar, we'll call him Paddy. Isn't it funny? All men are called Paddy in Ireland. But anyway, he's had a few Guinnesses, as one does. And uh, he goes into the bathroom. 
And he's still like standing there at the urinal. And there's this little chap next to him, about this tall. And he looks down. I mean, we've all done it. And he notices the little guy's got a great big fucking dick. And he looks down and he says, Excuse me, he says in his best Daniel Day Lewis impersonation. Excuse me. I can't tell but notice, but you've got a great big schlong there. And uh, the little guy says to him, Well, uh, that's true. And you see, that's because I'm a leprechaun. And since you've uh, sprung my secret, as it were, I have to grant you three wishes on one condition. That you'll let me fuck you up the ass. <laughs> and Paddy thinks about it. He says, three wishes from a leprechaun. Fuck up the ass with a great big dick. What the hell? So he spread eagles himself over the urinal. And the little guys are like there. And he's going, so tell me, he says. So tell me, what's your name? And Paddy there, he says, my name's Paddy. And he says, are you married at all, Paddy? He says, yeah. I've been married for a few years now. And he says, so have you got any, any fruits of the marriage, Paddy? Have you got any kids? I says, yeah, I've got a couple of kids. That was a particularly hard thrust. And he says, so tell me, Paddy, what are their names, Paddy? How old are they? And he says, well, there's little, little Beth who's just turned six and, and little Sean's just turned do. I says, so tell me, Paddy, how old does that make you? And I says, well, well, I'm 31. And the little fellow says, well, doesn't that make you a little old to believe in leprechauns? <laughs> it wasn't the biggest laugh in the world, but what the hell? Hey, I mean, like, I've, I've been here on very short notice. Like, I mean, you know, I was prepared for this show about two hours ago, you know, I cancelled my entire afternoon's uh, agenda, so be grateful. That's all I've got to go for here this afternoon, so I thought I'd go with a bang. Uh, we started with one, so here we go. Oh, my God. I think that's it. Thank you very much. Fantastic, you're watching Hell Bent. Uh, we're back for the second half of the show. And just before the break, you saw uh, a young chap doing some, some, well, I suppose, comedy. Uh, and his name is, well, I mean, I don't know what to call it. Is it stand up? Uh, no, it's more sort of like a stand down, you know. You sort of like get down there and get out of the hell out of there as quickly as possible. But yeah. This is Marty. Hello. This is Marty. Marty, you, um, you're a part of the real horror show. Real Horror Show, well, yes, Rocky Horror Picture Show in Melbourne, on the situation version. Ha, big plug there. <laughs> All right, we'll get to that a bit later on. So, so what is it, for people who don't know? Okay, it's essentially a 23-year-old movie, uh, the Rocky Horror Picture Show, for those of you who didn't get it the first time. It's, uh, the audience participation version is where we get out, we act out the movie, we make fun of the movie, we yell at the movie, we throw things, we make fun of the audience. It's generally a really fun thing to do when you're uh, bored on the last Saturday night. Oh, fantastic. And so it's, oh, here we go, Plug City. Let's get it all out. Okay, it's called The Rocky Horror Show. It's uh, the last Saturday of the month. Yes. And where can people find it? Elstonwick Classic Cinema. Elstonwick Classic Cinema. Yes. Um, Elstonwick? Elstonwick. Elstonwick. Don't it's ask me. It's a funny place to find The Rocky Horror Show, isn't it? Elstonwick? That's what I thought. I was just walking through Elstonwick one day. I thought, my God, it's The Rocky Horror Picture Show. No, <laughs> I didn't expect to see that. <laughs> and you're in the Melbourne cast, but you were also in the Sydney cast. I was in the Sydney cast, yeah, for a uh, uh, few years. It's like um, very different up there. It's like much more intense because it's a weekly show, so it's like everyone gets in and gets in and gets in with it. Whereas Melbourne is a lot more relaxed about it. It's a lot more fun, I think. Well, you know, I would argue that Melbourne is a lot more relaxed and a lot more fun. But <laughs> that's a personal uh, thing. Um, okay, so do you play one specific character or do you range? What do you do? Uh, me personally, I yeah. tend to MC. I warm up the audience before the show. I occasionally play Frank and Verda, um, Riff Raff. I've also played Brad. Uh, Magenta, I play <laughs> Janet, I, I play, play yeah, yeah, everybody, yeah, 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 played yeah, yeah. everybody. Has, have you got a favourite one? Uh, that's hard. I, I like doing Frank. I like doing bits of Frank. Hell, I like <laughs> doing, I like doing Frank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a line, I tell you. Um, so, sorry, I've, I've embarrassed myself now, I'm laughing. Um, how do you go? The colour, it's so warm. I know. And so, how did you get into performing? 
Oh, I got drunk one night. You got drunk? I got drunk. Essentially, I got drunk in Sydney one night, and so like people took me along. I'm like, wow, it's like, you know, I've never seen this. The whole people getting up there doing the movie, and the next week I went back, and the next, and the next, and you know, like a couple of weeks later, I was doing my first part. All right, so you, you basically knew the script before you started? Shit, yeah. All right. And so, because you're, you're a computer geek now, is that right? I'm a computer geek now, yes. How did you get from, like, how did you get to computer geek from performer and, and all those things? It makes sense if you think about it. And a social worker beforehand? A so, well, no, I was studying social work to be precise. I wasn't actually a social worker. No, I went from social work to uh, drama. I, I did a performance with Sidetrack Theatre in Sydney. And then I went to computer geek. Amazing, quite amazing. <laughs> Are you I'm a trashy not really person? It. Are you a trashy person, do you think? Yeah, of course I am. You are? I, I, I'm an eminently trashy person. If I can swear, take off my clothes, or drink beer in a gratuitous manner, I will do so. And that's why you, you got involved with the... Uh... I think so. Uh, Rocky Horror is essentially trash. It was 70s trash, it was 80s trash, it was 90s trash. The, the whole... The audience participation thing has been going so long that it's just taken on more or less pop culture, pop icon, trash status. So, yeah, it's... If you're in the trash, you should be in the Rocky Horror. Oh, what's your? F where would you most like to be naked? Heaven. Heaven. Yes. Right. I would like to streak in front of God's house. <laughs> We've got a bit of a rebel here. You didn't used, you didn't used to be a Mormon or anything. Uh, did you? <laughs> right, let's 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 go to a nice subject. Butterflies. You've got a thing for butterflies. I have got a thing for butterflies. And what do you like? Why would you like butterflies? Because. A, because they're beautiful, B, because they're sort of like, they're, 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 they're kind of free, they're sort of like essentially the, the spirit of the air, but you know, they flip from place to place to place, they never really settle down, but they're short lived and it's kind of like, you know, there is a message there, but if you, you know, you, 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 you got to settle down or you know, you'll be beautiful and then you'll die and I, I want to be beautiful forever. Well, don't settle down, I'm going to take your microphone off, I'm going to send okay. you over to Mrs. Everline because we've got something coming up over here. Uh, off you go, fly, 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 be free. Be. And here we have, we're going now to the next segment. We've got our two fake ladies and white trash. Hey there, oh, Remy. You've lost your microphone right down here. There, went down the front. I will, yes. Of course, this session, Lindsay, we thought we'd look at white trash skin care. Is this right? Yes. Yes, we, yes, we are, Kay. Keep talking, keep, talking, keep talking, keep talking. Well, this is it, uh, because I think that the, the main point with this segment is we're taking our cultural aesthetic into oh. corners of the globe. And oh, skin care and beauty are very important to <coughs> poor white trash. Now, what have you prepared something? Well, I've prepared now, Kay. You're going to demonstrate I'm on me. I'm going to demonstrate on you. You know, now, you'll have to roll up your sleeves. Oh. Now, we have some simple scissors here, which are very important in skin care and looking after yourself because we all know there are hairs in certain places that we don't want to get in the way, Are Kay. you going to wax me? No, I'm not going to wax me. I'm just pointing out the little snippet in those special oh, little nasal. places. Yes. Nasal hair. Nasal hair. And, look, if I can, can I say pubic hair? <laughs> now, we've all seen this. And this is... Are you going to trim my pubic hair? No, no, I'm going to no. do your elbows first. Oh, I see. Now, just, oh, you get, just, that's just right. get a bit of this blue business and oh look at those elbows Kay, oh no I've got really masculine elbows I might be rub it my... in rub it in that doesn't that feel gorgeous it actually feels it? like really go. good sex <laughs> <laughs> and then later on you can get into well, all sorts Lindsay, of Lindsay I things. don't know about you all but my elbows having an orgasm at this point of time oh well, look at my hand is now actually what we can do is well, just sort of set up a bit of a face <laughs> with this first of all there we go Lindsay as yes. you can see I have removed all trace of makeup for this segment exactly <laughs> No, because and you must do that. I know that's important. I read in all the women's magazines, yes. they say remove all trace of makeup before you attempt any kind of skin care. No, What's I'm that? Not... <laughs> well, this is the, the most essential element in the, in the face pack I have prepared for you. It's your everyday common variety yes. of yoghurt. Now, I've chosen um, a red fruit yoghurt because yes. it made it look good on camera. I must retain to... my dignity during this you segment. You must. Yeah. And to exfoliate, I've prepared some macaroni. And you just crunch it up with a little hammer. Pop that in. Is that the exfoliant? Give it, that's the exfoliant. Just give it a little gentle splash, splash around, around like this. Yes. There you go. Now the exfoliant yeah. will actually remove all your dead bits. Exactly. Okay. Now if you lean back, mm. and it just goes on very delicately. <laughs> <laughs> just don't open your eyes. Very delicately. You can feel it getting in, can't you? That's really getting into my pores. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Now just rub it in, rub it in very delicately, making mm. sure the exfoliant does work. There you go. Now the next thing it's is... Nice. Now, is that raspberry? It is. I it's can't everywhere. open my eyes, Lindsay. And see, now... <laughs> I'm at your mercy. And it's just your everyday common style variety macaroni, as you can see. Yeah. Now what you can do with that is if you put it inside the elbow, just yeah. exercise What does gently. that do? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> 
But I'm making... But it feels great. There you go. Now, cucumber is very good for the eyes because we oh. all know that eyes are just the absolute worst. I mean, everybody knows your age by your eyes. So we just slap these. And you have to leave back a little bit more. Just slap them on there. There you go. What's this now, going to do? This clears the pupils? Now, this will shut you up for a while. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now the tea bag, we've just uh, a very fashionable bit. Oh, I'm going to get a cricket one here. Tea bag, and we're going to get a cricket one here. Oh, are you? Well, don't oh. worry about that. Well, I'll give you a massage next watch. The okay. white trash massage. <laughs> now here we go. Now the tea bag mm. for your ears. So mm. you know how men get hairy ears, and sometimes it does have the drag queen. So you just mm. pop it in here like this. <laughs> Away you go, and you have to lean back. You won't work. <laughs> you have to relax and lean back. What? And there you go. What? Is that what? Now, how about that? Is that, that everything? Remy, would you like to sit down here and just do a quick one on you as well? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Can now, I help you do, Remy? You can, yeah, we can both do, Remy. <laughs> now, Remy, it's very, very simple. I just want you to relax, get in contact with deeply, chakra time, lean right back. And it's, so it's so simple. This costs a dollar fifty-two, by the way. So yes. don't, you know, just be resourceful with everything you do because you know, if you if you pour white trash, there you go. It's delicious, oh. isn't it? It really does get in. And Lindsay, just, uh, I'll do his kneecaps. Very, just do the kneecaps. Yes. There we go. See, see that, nobody that, out there would have realised no. you used lube but for this. this of course, is Lin Lindsay, Look this is for the, the tough skin. Oh, oh there you go. <laughs> Can I get a different show? No. <laughs> You're stuck with the What is that? Don't forget the cucumbers. Oh, no, you just need to massage, <laughs> massage right that in, in there. Right yeah. in. Yeah. I mean, these things don't work There's unless they the massage right there. in. Now, your eyes look disgusting. <laughs> you've been out far too long. Yeah. Oh, this, this is you go. good. Oh, you've got hairs yeah. up your nose. Can I have those scissors? No! Yes, there you go. <laughs> there scissors. we go. Oh, and I'm not oh. left-handed. What Tea a bag. There we go. Tea bag. So, there you have it. A fabulous facial, all for $1.50. And, uh, and do you know what? It's actually really, really it relaxing. Great, it works, it? Why don't we go to Mistress Aveline's game show? Yeah. This is a wheel of torture over here. Ah. Hey, Lindsay, can I have you for the next wheel of torture? We get, might get you doing a, a makeover on the slave. I'm, I'm, I'm loser. OK. Uh, get the contestants to introduce themselves. You are... I'm Marty. Marty. And you are... And I'm Lester. Lester. OK, straight into the questions. On, in the song, The Twelve Days of Christmas, what are the six geese doing? Oh, Marty. Elaine. That's right. Russell Crowe and Jack Thompson starred in the film about a relationship between a father and his gay son titled The Sum of... Oh, yes. You. No. Some of us. No, too late. no second prize. What was the name of the last host recently axed from the Midday Show? Yes. Kerry Ann Kenley. That is correct. She barked. What was the occupation of the seven dwarves? They were miners. That is correct. The average human body contains enough fat to make ten bars of soap. True or false? True. False. You fat. can only get seven out of them. <laughs> In the 1950s, the US Senator Joseph McCarthy labelled the activities of groups such as the gays and the communists as what? Anti-American. That is correct. Rigged. It is not rigged. No, right. I'll take to you with a, a, a paddle and make Lindsay seem quite nice. The wife of which American president, noted for his forgetfulness, denounced homosexuality as abnormal and a sickness? You want, you want the American president's name? Ronald yes, Reagan. That is correct. Um, in a single columns of gay newspapers, what does the initial GWM stand for? Goat with mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> no, with mirrors? but you're the kind of sick, perverted person that I should get to know better. In Siberia in 1994, a container full of what drug was discovered in the 2,000-year-old grave of a princess? Come on, take a guess. What drug was around 2,000 years ago? Heroin. No, marijuana. The support group for partners and parents and friends of lesbians and gays is called what? Oh. Tea flag. That is correct. Yay. Complete this quotation from Oscar Wilde. I can resist everything except... Temptation. That is correct. Why were people recently evicted from a Catholic church in Melbourne as they tried to receive communion? Oh. Yes. Because they're gay. That's correct. The gloriously transformed Remy. What is the score, please? Um, well, Les has got three and Marty's got four. No, five. Oh. Okay. What does a female apprentice 
praying mantis do with its partner after sex? Oh. Ooh, we have to go to the slave. Which one first? Oh. Yes. They eat. That's correct. They eat one another. <laughs> Who is the grandson of the Tenerfield Saddler? Oh. Yes. Yes? Peter Allen. That is correct. Woo! Remy, can I have a score update? Are we... We're actually, we're even. We're 5-5. Five we're five. Even. Okay. The four, the four horsemen of the apocalypse in the Bible are conquest, slaughter, famine, and who? Oh, death. That is correct. We get to spin the wheel of torture. Let's get through. This is Avalon. Yes. Can I suggest one? Yes. Can the slave come over and lick the yogurt off our faces? Oh. <laughs> Do you wish? Certainly. Slave, <laughs> hey, go lick the yogurt off. Go ahead. Yeah. Let face it. Quick. Off you go. It's, okay. Well, we'll be back next week. Um, and um, <laughs> stick to that stay tuned. This is very wet, actually. It's like a cow. A um, car. <laughs> That's great. Get the earwax. <laughs> Listen to it. That's amazing. Thank, Thank you. you very much. My pleasure. If you have any other uses, just let me know. And, and... Cool. Everybody come over to the desk. Come on. Mm. Yeah, come on. Oh, this in the other? Oh, because now we're just, we're basically just quiet. I can't hear anything. Yeah, we're just doing credits now, aren't we? I think.